we have arrived at day 10 of Defamorember. Is it just me or is this month just totally speeding by? So let's get right to it, no time to waste. <laughs> this is paper bag number 10. I realized I should probably also show you backsides more. If you missed me saying this in the past, there is a video in the playlist, which is linked below, the Defemorember playlist, where I also have a video where I show you exactly how I decorated these paper bags. And Louise's Defemorember playlist is also linked below. So if you ever miss a video, it's probably easiest to just refer to those two playlists. So what's our animal for today? We have a beautiful owl for you. And our snack, it's again something American. Maybe you're wondering why is this already the third American when I haven't even covered other countries. So maybe you remember I got snacks from 15 different countries. But when I went out and bought these snacks, I thought I need to represent the country most where I have the most viewers and that is North America. <laughs> so today we have nerds. I have eaten these before, I think many 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 years ago i don't really remember them that well i know they're small <laughs> well, obviously the packaging is very small i'm assuming that they have these in different colors does it say here oh lemonade wild cherry so this is what they look like <laughs> and they are wonderfully sour I would have liked them to be chewy. That's probably why I didn't eat a lot of these. Basically, it tastes like flavored, sour pieces of hard sugar. Not my favorite, I'm sorry. But since I do enjoy the sour taste, yeah, I can't give it more than four out of 10. I'm so sorry. So let's head on over to the craft desk. So our prompts today are leaves and an envelope. And I want to use this beautiful owl. Just a reminder that you can find the prompt list and the animal freebies linked below for you. For the envelope prompt, I'm going to use these two envelopes. You don't have to use square envelopes for what I'm doing. You can also use just regular envelopes. I would choose a size that fits into your journal. I'm going to start off by opening both sides on both envelopes. So I'm just going to cut a sliver of the right and the left side of both envelopes. After cutting the sides, make sure your envelopes are the same width. Here I see that I cut off a little bit more from one than the other. So I'm going to adjust that and just cut a tiny bit more. Uh, on this envelope. So once you have the same width, I'm going to unfold this. So you're going to have two pieces that look something like this, depending on whatever envelope shape you used. Of course, it's going to vary. And we're going to take one, place it on top of the other so that the flap of the envelope will go here. And then we're going to cut this lower piece off completely but we're going to not cut it off exactly at the crease we're going to cut it off a little bit higher than the crease so that when we fold it up so this will be gone when we fold this up it will easily fit in here and then close the flap Okay, so again, this goes on top like this. And then we're going to cut this part off a little bit higher than the crease. We will not be needing this part. So now we have a longer piece and a shorter piece. And before I glue anything together, I just want to re-glue these here because they tend to be loose. And this one here as well, I see is loose so now we can glue these together you can either just glue them on top of each other so i would glue this flap down and also glue this onto this 
I think it's more interesting to glue down the flap completely, but to not glue down this part completely, to just glue it here on the right and the left side so that this is a pocket as well. So it will look like when we open the flap, like this is a regular envelope and we just have like the envelope pocket here, but actually we can open up the flap and have more things in here. So I will start off by just gluing this flap onto the other envelope. Just lining up two creases. Holding it up. Then I can cut away, for example, here I see now that we have like a piece here and a piece here, which is too long. So I'll just cut that before I, well, actually I could do that also after I glue it. I'm just going to cut it now. And then I'll just put glue on this side and on this side. Actually, before I glue it, I think it's better to ink it up first. I will use vintage photo and a flat makeup brush because I want soft edges. I'm going to be covering all the surfaces with papers. So I don't need to worry about the middle. I just want the edges inked up. So I have all of my edges inked up on all of the relevant papers. So basically all the edges except this one here because this will be glued like a pocket onto this one. All of these are edged. So now I want to cover my envelope with some papers. You can use any kind of digital papers, you can use book pages, you can use magazine pages, any kind of collage father or scraps that you have. I'm going to use my latest digital kit, which is the Winter Wonderland. I printed these at 90% because I think this size will work better with the size of the images for my envelope. I printed this on regular copy paper. I think these will be cute to cut out and put on my envelopes. And by the way, this is today's goodie. So you can get 50% off this digital winter wonderland from today, December 10th until December 31st. And the code you will need to enter at the checkout I printed this one completely crooked, <laughs> is DEF 2022 Winter. I'm going to go ahead and cut out pieces of these prints to fit my envelope surfaces. I think I'll start off with this one here so that I can close the pocket. So here obviously we'll only have a little bit peeking out so probably makes sense to add something that just has a pattern or something there or maybe hmm maybe what about like a part like this would be cute as well we can just see the peaks of those trees maybe in one of the birds something like that so i've cut my piece to fit my surface and i am going to leave a little edge which is why i inked it up it's not going all the way till the bottom, but that doesn't matter. We won't see it because we're going to close it up. And now we can go ahead and glue those two sides closed. So now we see a little bit of the treetops peeking out and one of the birds. And before I continue to glue images on my envelope, I would like to think about how am I actually going to add it to my journal? Like which way is it going to be positioned? And am I gluing any part of it down? And if yes, which part? Because that part, obviously I don't need to decorate. For my journal, I plan on putting this in upright on a page and gluing it down on the back. I don't know yet whether I will make a pocket or not, but we will not see the back. So I don't have to worry about covering that. So I am going to cover these two squares. So I chose two fox images to go on the inside here. So this is one. 
and this is the second one and I made sure to cut both of these images the same size so that it will look nice on our envelope. So there's one and there's the second. I think they're so adorable. I'm such a huge fan of foxes. Then I also want to cover this part up here. And for that, I'm going to use this page here, but just the top. I'm not going to use the squirrel. I'll just use this part. First, I'll cut out a square to fit this, and then I'll cut this separately. So I've cut this. Now I'm going to stick this inside so I can trace that V shape for the opening. Ah, and I see that doesn't work because yeah it doesn't fit okay Let's see i can't see through it either so i'm going to have to do the best i can so this is how i want it positioned this is one and this is the second i'm going to take a ruler so i'm just going to extend these two lines one like this and one like this so now i see where they meet so i'm going to cut inside of that line because of course i want a little border here as well and i'm going to round these corners because these here are rounded as well that actually worked so i'll ink it up and then i can glue that down as well And I also want to add a background to this flap here. And for that, I want to add the moon and one of these birds. So I'll first cut here and here, and then I can trace this shape of my paper. So I cut this, and now I can put this in the center here. Actually, I'll put it a little further down because I do want to leave a border up here and I don't want to cut off my moon. So I'll center it like this. I'll put the flap down. Then I'll trace the flap on my paper. And I'll cut a little inside of that line to get my border. And I can just cut a straight corner here and then maybe round it with my corner rounder or just with my scissors but I think it's easier to first just cut the straight lines and then I can take my small corner punch which did a horrible job let's see if it will fit yep that's perfect so again I'll ink it up actually I'll just adjust the edge here just to have the same shape here and here as well. So now we have a really cute unfoldable envelope. We have our pocket here and we can flip it open and we have two cuties there. Now you can either leave it like this and then start embellishing it or you can continue and do what I do because I want this to fit with the style of the journal that Louisa made for me. So I need to grunge this up a little bit more and maybe add a little bit more color to the edges as well. So I'm going to use Louisa's technique by spraying the edges and grunging those up a little bit. I like wearing gloves whenever I work with Distress Oxide sprays because they really stain your hands. So using Louise's technique, I'm going to start by spraying the edges with water. I do want to be a little bit more careful than if I was doing a whole journal because, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to go crazy with this envelope. <laughs> oh, I actually don't need the back here because we won't see that. a little bit more in here i don't completely want to lose my images obviously so that's why i want to just be a little bit careful maybe i'll dab some of the middle off <laughs> i'm such a chicken <laughs> let's start with rusty hinge this is a new color for me never tried the rusty hinge oxide spray 
always shake it before you use it. So let's spray a little bit. Again, I don't want to go crazy. That's a lot already. Wow. Okay. Let's open this. Let's add a little bit more. Oh, it's very strong. <laughs> I think we need a little bit more water. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? I think Louisa is probably on the floor laughing already at me. I have a feeling I need to dry this before I continue or I don't know. I, I think it's getting so soggy and I'm so scared to mess up my images completely. Yeah, I'm going to dry this. I'm going to be a chicken. So I dried it a little bit, but I realized I have to add some more water anyway, because otherwise the next color I add will be so intensive. So <laughs> I need to do this anyway. So far I'm fine with it. What shall we add? Shall we try the speckled egg? Yes. It's also a new one for me. First time trying this. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, I think I'm going to dry this again. So I've dried these completely and I am thrilled with the results. I love the color combination. I chose those colors because they are also the colors I have in my digitals, the blue and the orange, although they're not exactly the same. I am in love with how grungy this is now. I think this gives it so much more interest. I will also link Louise's video of how she bulk distresses her signatures in this way, but she does a lot more. She crunches it up a lot more so that you can see how a pro does it. <laughs> And I would also like to encourage you to use what you have. If you don't have distress sprays or any kind of sprays, please use watercolors or thinned down acrylics. Just experiment and have fun. You can even use water soluble wax pastels. Just experiment. This is what Defemorember is for, to try new things as well. Oh, and I see here because of the, all the liquid I added, this has torn a little bit, which does not bother me because I can always tape that. So I could, of course, just put a washi tape or a masking tape or something on top. I would definitely put glue on either the washi or the masking tape if I do that. But I'm just going to use a piece of Louise's scrap here. And I'm going to take a part that has the gold, of course. <laughs> so I'll add some glue stick to that. And then I'll just glue that over the tear. And that just adds another fun element. Oh, it doesn't stick well because this is still damp. Okay, I'm going to dry this better and then stick that on. I'm so happy with how this turned out. So we have fulfilled the envelope prompt. We have not fulfilled the leaf prompt yet. I have a tin here with some dried leaves that I collected on some of my walks. I did press these so they are nice and easy to use. I did not find these ginkgo leaves. These were I think in a package from your creative studio. Aren't they just gorgeous? And in case you don't have dried leaves yourself, I have another freebie for you. So this is what that looks like. So I took photos of these exact leaves and made this freebie and I wanted to add some more interest. So I added some numbers and some scripts. So crackling on some of these leaves just to make them a little more fun even but some I left plain in case you want the leaves as they are so you're welcome to download that for free cut them out and use them for this prompt or any other project you might have I hope you enjoy them I actually have not made up my mind whether I want to use the dry leaves or these leaves but actually why not just use the dry leaves? I have them scanned now anyway. And I can also just stamp on them for some extra interest. And of course, we also still have this cutie owl. So I think I'll go ahead and cut out the owl first. 
Louisa and I have been sharing photos of the prompts that we have both already filmed because we don't want to influence each other. But of course, we want to see not the whole project, but like a sneak peek. So just a little portion of what we've done. And she mentioned after seeing some of mine that she was very surprised how colorful my ephemera is this year. And I told her it's because her journal is motivating me to add more color because she grunged it up so nicely with all these beautiful distress sprays with different colors so that's really motivating me to use more color to go better with the journal and i'm totally loving it so here's our little owl i've inked her up with walnut stain and i think i'm going to set her right on top here unfortunately that means i'm going to be covering up this bird but so be it so i think she would be very cute right there and so now we need some leaves. Actually, now thinking about it, I don't think I will use the real leaves because they're not sturdy enough because I'm thinking of kind of just laying some out here. And of course, the ones that are peeking over the edge will be super brittle. I could back them with paper, but I think rather than doing that, I'll just cut out something from here. You can, of course, always print this out at a smaller percentage if you want these leaves smaller. Okay, I'll cut a couple of these out and then let's go from there. So I cut out three of these. I've again inked them up with my walnut stain. Let's see if we can make this look nice. That doesn't look so bad, does it? Just wondering if I should maybe make the leaves a little more dimensional by like crumpling them up a little bit and not gluing them down flat. I want to get rid of this white hole here. Probably easiest to use pokey tool. Then I'll ink around that as well because I don't want the white showing that's good the other one we won't see so i don't have to worry about that one so let's crumple these up a little bit because leaves are never that flat are they okay so let's glue them on so i think i want this middle one to be on top so I'll first glue this one here. Crumple it a little more while I'm gluing it. Then we'll do the other one. And finally, the middle one. Now where did my owl go? Here it is. Yeah. And finally we can set our owl on top. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't want any glue on her tail. Okay, so from this side it looks good. From this side, not so much. <laughs> so what can we do? We can spray some more color. Let's add some water. And again, I'll start with the rusty hinge. I'll dry it a little bit, then I'll wet it some more again and add my speckled egg. So it's all dry. So much better, right? <laughs> now it looks nice from both sides. But what we definitely still need, yes, you got it. Let's protect her eyes. I don't want to blind her. I 
I've let this air dry and I also want to accentuate the folds a little bit more in the leaves. And I'm going to do that by using my Inca Gold Fast Drying Metal Gloss Paint. You could just do this with acrylic paint or watercolor, whatever you want. This has dried out a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of water. I think that should be good. And I really want to just get some on these creases. So I'll just very, very gently go over those. Looking back to the inside, I think we definitely need some gold splatters here as well. So I let this air dry again. I think they warm up those images again a little bit. And we could also add some sentiments, why not? I have these here, they are quite small, and I know they are from Finnabare. They were on the same sets where these stamps were on it. I bought this in the States four, four and a half years ago. I don't have the name. That was before I had a channel, so I didn't keep all the packaging, unfortunately. But again, use what you have. How about less perfection, more authenticity? Love that one. For the bottom one, I'm just going to add the word listen because he looks so nice and calm. He looks like he's listening to something. And we could also stamp something here on the front. And I'm choosing your story matters. Let's find a page to add this envelope to. Hmm. This would be very pretty. Or even here, that kind of combines the two pages because the colors are similar, but I would be covering up this here, so maybe not that. This is, I think, a great choice. Let's see if we have something else. I feel like I haven't done anything yet, but then when I flip through this, I see that, yeah, I have done a few pieces, actually. It's okay. I mean, after all, we've done 10. We're on day 10. This one works. Beautiful color combination. What about maybe some contrasting colors? This is the contrasting colors, but no, I don't like it with the flowers there. Maybe we can find another page. Yeah, this obviously is beautiful. Nope. How about this one? Oh, that's beautiful. I do like that contrast a lot with the green and the turquoise. I think I like that better than the one in front. And now the question is, do we want it to be a pocket or do we just glue the whole thing on? I think it makes sense to glue it on as a pocket because then we have the option, but we don't necessarily have to put anything in if we think it's too bulky. So from where should the pocket be accessible? From the top or from the side or even from the front, uh, from the front, from the bottom, why not? I'm gonna go with the top. So we have a pocket in the back here. We can flip up the envelope flap. We have a pocket here. I don't know yet what I'm going to put in there. And we can flip this down. And we have these cute images with the fun distress inks. Leaves 
and an envelope. Check. We did it once again. <laughs> See you back here tomorrow. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>